Also, you vote to use the EQR for a rate. You get your rate for the charge using the EQR rate method. You use the water to determine each user's fees. And Can I ask I, you a question? Yes. Is there, at what point did Salisbury, in all your research, did Salisbury have control of what the water usage was in the town of Salisbury? I'm not sure what your question is. Simple question. At what, oh, what date, the water usage what date was? did the town of Salisbury have control of the water usage within our community? That's a material. We what always, is it? Of course you could get the water. I got the water from, from the water company years ago. All you had to do was ask them. So we have water that, records going I back to I happened to be serving on the board at the time, and the town, Mr. Bass, asked the question, and the Penacheck would not share that information with the town of Salisbury. American Water Works would saying, not share that information. Are you saying that, that our water if, company refused to yes, give Salisbury It wasn't our water, water company. Use, but they refused. It wasn't our water company. It doesn't matter. They refused to tell you. Yes. I would love to see that in some kind of writing or if you can contact them. Nevertheless, nevertheless. It was their meters. Wasn't solved. That's immaterial. It was on water meter, and there had to be ways of getting water because I bought them from a water company. I'd like to see that writing too. I, I, it was a is there a now question? The other, because I asked people to limit it to three minutes. Okay. I've been more than generous. Okay. Now you've been on water meter for many water company for years. And using the town's own formula, using what John Lebeck said in, 19, uh, in 2006, <coughs> Salisbury treated 255,000 gallons of wastewater. If you, using the town's formula, which was in the 2008 revision of the sewer rules and regulation, regulations, you get the customer actual water consumption, gallons of the wastewater treated in that fiscal year. 255,000 for this analysis. You divide it by the days in the years, year, 65 multiplied by two, divided by twice the daily flow, 330 equals EQI units. The total EQI units for the town using 255 million gallons of wastewater is 4,234.122 units, EQI units. Then what you would do when you're talking about your fixed expenses, that year, according to Don Lebeck, the sewer user was, the budget, was $860,000. You divide that by the total EQI units, and at that year it would come up to $203.11. Salisbury was charging $240. The method is not that complicated. The EPA method is very similar to the Salisbury method, and there's a way of converting the water into EQI units, and then it's approximately 60,000 gallons of water equals one EQI unit. So that would mean if somebody used 120,000 gallons of water, they would be two EQI units. If somebody used 30,000 gallons of water, it would be a half of an EQI unit. That's how you get fair and equitable. Proportionate shares, which is what Salisbury agreed to do in the first place in order to receive the grants. Do you have Thank any you. other questions for me? Yeah, I do too, a whole bunch of them. You, you have consistently alleged that the town has violated the uh, EPA uh, grant for the sewer. Yes. Are you aware of the fact that the EPA audits all of their grants, and in the EPA audit of the town's receipt of the sewer, they found no such violation? Are you well, aware in, of that? Well, in the EPA in the state audit, they found the contract seven was extraneous, and they also found that it was an $18 million project. That's irrelevant to my question. My question is, do you know that the EPA audited the federal grant that they gave to the town for the sewer, and they found no violation of the audit, such as the one that you have been alleging for the last 20 years. Are you aware of that? In what respect are you saying? The sewer the user town, fees? You alleged the town violated the EPA grant conditions. There was no 
recorded audit from the EPA, and they audit all of their grants. There was no recorded audit that backs up your allegation. You well, are you aware of that? Well, let me put it this way. The Commonwealth of Mass, Auditor of the Commonwealth, I believe it was Danucci, the report of the final audit, audit of EPA construction grant number C250454-02, awarded by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to the town of Salisbury, Massachusetts, for the period of September 10, 1985 to March 1, 1990, set, gave the contracts 23456, um, discussed the eligible costs, were um, ineligible, was anything incurred, incurred and claimed contrary to a provision of a law, regulation, contract, grant, cooperation agreement, or other grant agreement or document governing the expenditure of funds. Their final grant came to about eight, it came to, uh, well, the federal participation was 11 million 472,784. I am finishing that. And if you look at that audit, which was for the EPA grant, if you look at page 15, it says, um, construction, we noted the billings claim for two of the consultants inspection employees that identified significant portions of these services to inspection activities related to constru construction contract number seven pertaining to another extraneous project. <coughs> so they did do an audit, yes. which is an answer to your question, yeah. and they are, took are off the I ineligible are, cost. Are you aware that there is no finding of any audit that backs up your allegation that the town was required to tie its sewer rates to water consumption. Are you aware there was no audit that backs up that allegation? Well, I don't know if there was an Thank audit done on that. Oh, what I sorry. have okay, is, what I have is okay. from, uh, from David Chin, David Chin from no. EPA, gave me. I gotta ask you to take the seat. I will. He just asked me a question. So, so Mr. Harrington, he sent me this checklist saying yes, we would use seated. water. Please be seated. And there was a hand over here. One more time. My name is Al Percy, Carter Ave, Salisbury, Massachusetts. Uh, just sitting there, and I'm thinking, be careful of what you wish for. Okay, I think we've all been taught that. I didn't. I told you in Florida, and it's not a little nothing town. By the U.S. Census, it's the fastest growing town in the South. I think it's like five percent. It's in the top five percent. And I told you that even though I'm not there, I pay a fixed amount of water, just like I do in Salisbury. When I'm not here, I pay a fixed monthly fee. And I pay a fixed amount of $90, and it might go to $120 uh, a quarter. Okay, all set. Everything I'm hearing is based on the water usage. Just thought I'd let you all know, in Florida, in that little town that's the fastest growing in the South by it's in the top five. I pay 100% of the amount of water I use. So when I'm there in the winter months and my water bill comes to $50, I'm paying $50 for storage. Now, when I water my lawn, no, I don't pay that cost, okay? But I had to pay for a separate meter. I had to pay for separate plumbing. So be careful of what you wish for. You might turn around and say, it's going to be based on usage. Remember what's being said. 90% of the cost is fixed. Folks, if it's true cost, if those are the costs, you're going to pay it one way or another. You're going to pay it in pennies, or you're going to pay it in dimes, or you're going to pay it in nickels. But you're going to pay it. Either that, or you're not going to have storage. Thank you. I'm sorry to applaud you guys again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. I'm attorney Paul Magliocchetti. Uh, my family owns a home at 129 Railroad Ave, and I'm also here this evening represented the Salisbury Beach uh, Citizens for Change. 
So I'm here as a homeowner and uh, as counsel, I guess. Um, a lot's been said here. I'm really going to narrow my discussion to a couple of very specific points. Um, one of which is I was reviewing the presentation and I'm really focusing on the, the EQR issue and whether or not we should be using an EQR or going to some kind of a meter system. I think that's important. Um, and I'm looking at uh, the presenter's why not use base. And he talks about, a, he has four points. The first one is that water use is not equal to wastewater discharge. Yeah, I guess that's true because there is water that you use outside that will go into the ground that's not going to seep into the sewage system. However, as was discussed earlier, all but only a handful of communities in the whole Commonwealth of Massachusetts use that kind of system. So that should tell you something. And so there is a way to do it, and there needs to be a will to do it, and you're dictating that will. The second point he raises is that winter use is hard to implement in a seasonal community. I don't know if I agree with that. It's actually pretty simple to implement because seasonal users don't have any winter use. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's a way to, to, I know that the argument is that you have these fixed costs and everyone, by virtue of accessing the system, they need to contribute towards those fixed costs. Well, you can have an, uh, a fee to open it up in May and another fee to close it up, you know, in the winter to contribute some, but it should all be a proportionate share. It should not be a disproportionate share. And that's really what we're considering when we look at this EQR. What's fair and what's proportionate? Now, when you look at the rates that were given in your chart, I just did the numbers really quickly this evening, but you talked about the average user in the community uses 200 gallons, I believe, a day. And the increase for that uh, user was approximately 17 or 18 percent under your revised uh, schedule that you're going to be implementing. Then you look at the sewer use under the EQR. That increase is about 33 or 34%. That's almost double the increase of the water user. That's very disproportionate, and it's, it's important in, in, in this respect. The EQR disproportionately impacts the seasonal users because they're not using it. So that 17 or 18% increase, that lower increase, is really a benefit to the annual households here in the community. Mm -hmm. Whereas the EQR, it's high all across the board, but it's disproportionately high to the seasonal users. And I know it's easy to say, well, you know, everyone's always counting, it's a political issue, you know, and, and you get a balance the interests of all these different people. Mm -hmm. But it's so disproportionate that I really think that you need to look at the fairness of that. And that's really at the crux of what I'm getting at here. Because there's been a lot of talk about these fixed costs and you know the disproportionate share. And you know, I really think that the EQR, based on the numbers that I saw here tonight, they're disproportionate to begin with because the water fees are going up 17 to 18 percent, and they're going the sewer fees are going up across the board 30, double that, 33 percent. That's a huge increase. And like I said, when you look at the fact that the seasonal users don't use it at all for six months, that's even more of an increase for for them not using it at all because they're paying it anyways. So those are the points I want to make this evening. Uh, you may be. Seeing me here again, I don't know, or hearing from you, but I am curious to see how this plays out, out over the, in the future. And I do look forward to uh, communicating with you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just one point, Mr. Chairman. In terms of the reason why the sewer rate increase is being recommended as a higher increase is because the sewer deficit is projected to be a higher deficit. Yes, and it's it is. directly related to the potential cost of expanding the plant. And regardless of whether you live here year-round or not, if the EPA says you have to spend $6 million on the plant, then the town needs to bond that money. And everybody has to pay their proportional share of that bond, whether you live here six months of the year, one day of the year, if you own property in town. And there's a fixed cost associated to the borrowing of that $6 million, everybody has to pay it. But you have a choice whether to increase it 5% over five years or to do it the way you're doing, which is 25% all at once. Doing the 25% all at once, even though you're not increasing over the next four years, it's still more of an increase. 
than going 5% a year. I mean, you just project it out. The number's higher. 5% a year doesn't give you the same amount of revenue uh, because it doesn't extrapolate out that way. Again, because of deficits. Exactly, but you, you have that choice. Time. You're making the choice to go with the higher increase, which is going to increase your revenues higher over the term than just the 5% <coughs> increase that they recommend it will. It's, it's, this like compound, it's like compounded interest. Who's recommending a 5% increase? Well, that was in one of the studies, and that was done in the workshop. That was considered at the workshop. <laughs> Look at the tapes for the workshop. I watched it. I, there was a, there was a discussion about increasing five percent over five years. Well, one one selectman asked whether or not if we if we increased it incrementally rather than a live increase at the beginning, and That's no my increase, point, yes. whether that would uh, result in the same amount of revenue. And actually, the consultant estimated um, on the water side, uh, in order to generate the same amount of revenue that. Uh, recommendation uh, would produce, you would need to, if you phased it in, you would need to increase water 15% in fiscal 16, 13% an additional 13% in fiscal 17, an additional 11% in fiscal 18, an additional 10% in fiscal 19, which is about 40 something percent increase. 49 percent. So it, it, he recommended that a fairer way to do it would be a larger increase up front and then no increase for four years. We look, we look at all the all I mean, these aren't, these aren't happy numbers to talk about because of the deficit. They're not happy numbers, but you still have to look at equity with all the homeowners in the community. And that's, that's our point. That's a positive decision. <coughs> you, you have to have a balance between equity and equity. Grace Marie. Three minutes, come up with a question. Thank you. I, I would like to say, I don't think you said that to anyone else. No, but that's all right. Sister just used all I'm, your time. I'm, well, I'm another person, Mr. Bolio. Um, but I'm glad it's being televised. In response to Neil Harrington's question about the audit, um, does EPA know that you're not using, you're, you are violating the contract? Because according to our documents here that we have, we signed an agreement that we were going to use actual water. It was voted in in 1990 and again in 92. EPA had the understanding that we were we were honest and reliable here. And why would they think that you were not? I have found out since then that you've been well aware that you've been violating the grant conditions. So as far as any audit, why would they suspect that you would do this after you received $18 million? Well, the town, does not, the town does not agree with your assertion that we have been well aware that we're violating the grant. In fact, we believe just the opposite. Well, that's fine. Well, then we'll check with don't EPA. Say that we well, we'll check with EPA. We'll check with the EPA, we we'll check with EPA tomorrow, and let's see who's right and who's wrong. Because I have the documents here, and EPA believed us. They believe the town of Salisbury. And I'm saying that you don't, you, you're not honoring the contract. As far as I'm concerned, any marriage contract or any agreement is a contract, and it is being violated. So audit or no audit, there's many, there's many things in audits that are not always accurate. So are you I saying that the EPA inadequately audited their own contracts? No, I, what I'm saying is right. what the town gave to the EPA was the 1990 and 1992 vote saying that you were doing it. And you didn't do it. What the, EPA, what the town did was implement the conditions of the EPA grant. The EPA then audited the grant and didn't find the violation that you were alleging that we committed. So well, I, it, it, well, stuff, we don't agree with you. Well, that's fine. We'll, we'll let the EPA decide that because I will contact them tomorrow morning and let's see who's right and who's wrong. And uh, I do have one other thing to say about the raid. I know there was one gentleman who was talking about Florida. And I, I'm, I'm not sure, well, first of all, I've been in the restaurant business, so I always, my analogies are always with food. But when we talk about the rate, the rate doesn't necessarily mean if it's 360 or 480, it's not the rate that is the problem. 
it's that the usage determines how much of the rate you pay. <coughs> so in other words, if you're, if, let's say $480 is the new figure, and that's equivalent to 60,000 gallons of water a year. If you do get a senior citizen or somebody who conserves like Paula, and she's only using 20,000, then she would be paying one third that amount. So as far as the town losing, the town will never lose because the rate is the determination of how much you need. So if you need X amount of millions of dollars, you will always get it. But it's very similar to when you go to determine a rate for food, if it's $10 a pound, and this lady buys a half a pound, she pays $5. It's very simple, the town will not lose. The ones losing now are the people who conserve, the senior citizens, and those people who really try not to waste money. And as far as, um, as the consultant, I would like to know, does he, was the, the consultant aware that we are part of the step three grant conditions and not the same as any other community in this town, in this state? There's a very big difference between grant conditions and step three grant conditions. So please look that up, your school commissioners, you should know that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, I would like someone to check with EPA, because I am. Um, first, I, I've come back around the second time here this book. <coughs> Governor Anderson, let it go. Um, when I first bought my house in South Memphis, uh, Metropolitan District Commission handled the water. It was $160 a year for the sewer. And uh, in the 80s, Governor DeCock came up with the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority. And uh, my sewer <coughs> bill went to $1,800 a year. So I'm a little skeptical about changing anything about the sewer. And uh, one other thing is, my, my little house on the, on the beach is 800 square feet. It's a two-family duplex. On 1,400 square feet of land. And I use it as one family. I, don't, I have no tenants. Um, and I use it for my, me and myself, my wife, my two kids, and my nine grandkids. And granted, three months out of the year, four months out of the year, you know, it's a joke on the beach. You got a zillion friends for three months out of the year. And then the winter, you all alone. And uh, my thing is, I pay taxes as a two family. I pay the two saw bills. I pay everything as a two family. Because if I, something happens to me, my wife can have, have some kind of income, maybe, as a, uh, a two family. But if you change this to usage, I'm going to benefit because I won't, I won't, that other uh, unit won't be paying anything because there'll be no usage in the water. It's only going to be one unit, it's the usage. Who's going to pay for that lack loss of the $306? The town. Other users. I'm going to pay for it. And my neighbors are going to pay for it, and Paul, you're going to pay for it. That's just one house. Now this town is forty to 50,000 people for three months. Then it goes, boom. You, you live on a beach. You can play football on North End Boulevard now. <laughs> right? Who is going to pay for the other 33,000 people that I'm here? Anybody tell me that? <coughs> Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay for the 33,000 flushes every day? The 7,000 people that are still here every day. It's impossible. If you have 40,000 people in this room, right? And you charge 10 cents to go into the bathroom, right? And it cost a fixed rate to run that bathroom. Then tomorrow, you only have 7,000 in here. You're gonna have to charge 
50 cents for the bathroom. Right? Who's gonna pay for my other? My other unit. Anybody? Who's gonna pay for the other unit? The one who's consuming more. They're not gonna be here. <laughs> then no one's gonna be here. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Follow more again, 180 North End Boulevard, and this is my last time up. Uh, tough act to follow. Uh, to Mr. Teresi, though, uh, and I. I appreciate his point of view, but my feeling is, and yeah, you know, sometimes what you ask for you might get, I want to pay for what I use. If it happened to go up, at least I'm paying for what I use. I don't want to pay for what I'm not using. So if I was paying for what I use, well, and, and it does go up, like he said, watch what you ask for. Well, the family of eight is going to go up a lot more than mine because they're paying for what they use. But that isn't even why I'm here. I, I'm here for two issues. Uh, I worked for the government for over, over 30 years, and the very first slide that you were showing about the projections going out five years, well, we used to do that going out five years. That was part of my job. And the rule of thumb with most governments, if not all of them, is if you start to cut, they're going to cut your budget, which would mean, in this case, taxes would go down, uh, water bills would go down, so you better project as much as you can. I, I happen to notice, I think, 100000 for vehicles. I don't have the slide, so I don't know everything. But everybody knows that if the money wasn't there, you wouldn't spend the 100000 for vehicles. But if you don't put it in, it's going to get cut down. Um, I used to put in training. I used to put in overtime. Because if I didn't, my budget would be cut down. So I think that could be looked at. The other thing is I. I, I'm a, I have a master's in business and accounting, and I know um, the things were just got done, they're going to be audited, but I would like to be able, and I believe it's a public record, to look over the water and sewer um, income statements and balance sheets, just so I can look at the fixed prices and see if they're really 90%. And I think that's, you know, a, a fair request. We can do that. Thank you. Uh, uh, just relative to the issue of the, the, there was in, in the work in the uh, subcommittee, the issue of fixed and unfixed was beaten to death um, between the committee, the uh, finance director, and the DPW director, moving back and forth. So, in, in the numbers, uh, uh, yeah, you can go next, uh, Jim. Uh, so the numbers were looked at. Um, actually, and, and I think the projections that you saw on the slide relative to those those things that are making up the deficit, they're reasonable. They could have, we could have made them, we could have uh, had them greater, okay? But we wanted to have numbers that, realistic numbers. Um, you know, and I can give you specifics at some point. Uh, Jim, did you have to add one answer? Mr. Dundera was part of the committee. Uh, Jim Dundera, 16 Second Street. Uh, Paul, I just would like to address your comment about government and budgets. Um, I, in addition to being on this committee, I served on the Warren Advisory Committee for nine years. Uh, there is no fat in this town. Can there be a dime saved here and a dollar here? Probably. but. There is not a lot of waste. It's a, it's a very efficiently run government, and we're all fortunate, and that's why we have such a low tra tax rate. And that's also true relative to the water and sewer budget. So the fact is we have water pipes in this town that are 75 years old or older. Those have to be replaced. That, that costs money. We had a new tank put in down the beach. Did that, did we, do we need that tank today? No, that tank has more capacity than we currently need, but it's for future development um, down the beach. It was an investment that was made. You know, you, you, uh, the, the, word, the one thing that I would like everyone to walk away with, I don't want anyone to get the impression 
that anything was padded because it absolutely wasn't padded. And, th and there was a lot of pushback, you know, as people not on the Board of Selectmen or working for the town. Al Peterson and I went a 